All right, so we want to be accountable for your time. Uh, we tell you it's going to start at 7.30, so we're a little bit off the mark, but uh, I think that's okay. Um, wow. So, hey, guys, thanks for coming down to this installment of SF New Tech. This is a very special one, and it's going to be a good one. So good on you for joining us. Um, the way this works, if, you, uh, if you've been drinking at the back bar, that's all cool. Uh, but, however, from here on in, John, the bartender, is actually going to move inside to the side room. So there's a secret, double awesome secret room on the side uh, where you can go and grab a cocktail. Uh, we just ask that you take all your conversations, if you want to talk, into the side room or outside. The reason we send the bartender away is because we've done this long enough to know that if there's an open bar or bar that's open, people are going to yap. Um, but this is the part of the night where we all actually sit down, shut up, pay attention. Um, hopefully in the uh, previous two hours or whatnot that we've been doing, uh, we've been open here, uh, you've met somebody cool. Um, maybe grabbed a taco or two. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, right on. Yeah, so the taco truck follows us around. I can't shake him, but uh, that's not a, not, not, a, not a big deal. We, we love it. And rest assured, for those of you who are first timers, the taco truck has an A rating from the health department. So no bugs in your tacos. That's a promise. Um, cool. So uh, as you are well aware, tonight is all about uh, iOS. And we are going to shake out. We have seven companies that are going to be performing, performing, uh, giving demos for you tonight. And uh, one of these is going to go home with, uh, with a big prize of being selected by you to head on over to Macworld and be part of our Six About to Break event there. And we're going to learn a little bit about more than that, a little bit more about that in a second. Um, hopefully, uh, if you had registered, and I see you guys, everybody with a white name tag, uh, registered with an email address. Uh, we sent an email out uh, not too long ago inviting you to participate in what we're calling SFNT Invest, and that is our tool that we built to help uh, to help understand what you guys all like up on this on this stage. So basically, everybody who walked in this room tonight received a million bucks that you're able to spend on the startups you see on stage. Okay, raise your hand if you didn't get the email. Okay, you, you all did. Raise your hand if you don't care, don't give a shit. Okay, you guys are good. Okay, good. So this is audience participation. This is important because all of these guys, like I, it could have been me saying, you know, uh, let's, this guy's going to go. No, no. It's your job to choose the winner for that. Then we'll, we've got five more slots to fill, uh, and then we get to work. Um, okay, let's see here. So we couldn't make this happen without sponsors. First and foremost, big thanks to Macworld. Paul, I'll pa call you up in a second, but I just want to say this event wouldn't happen without Macworld. Um, it's very exciting, all the stuff that we're doing with them, and uh, we're going to learn about that in a second. But also, uh, to our friends at Bing and Telerik. So, yeah, right on. So uh, let, me, let me welcome Laura up real quick from Telerik. Uh, and then, Lisa, c come on up with your machine so we can plug you in. Um, who here hasn't heard of Telerik until tonight? I think you guys are just lazy. Nobody's raising their hand for anything tonight. Everybody knows Telerik? Okay, you can sit down. No, no. Um, no tell us more about Telerik and, and what's going on. So um, thanks, everyone, for coming. We are thrilled to be partnering with SF New Tech. This is such a great venue. Um, uh, Telerik is a mobile and web application development platform and tool company. You might know us by our other products called Kendo UI, which a lot of the mobile app developers know us by. Um, Kendo UI, Icenium, uh, Ecotech. Um, we've got dev tools for .NET. Um, so we've got the whole platform covered. And we're happy to give you um, uh, trial licenses. Um, just let us know. Give us your card. And um, we just launched the platform for so we're happy to talk to you about that too. So thanks for coming out and supporting SF New Tech. Thank you, Laura, for supporting SF New Tech. And Telerik will be with us at Macworld as well, which is super exciting. Um, okay, next up, we are excited to meet Bing tonight. Yay. So we've had the honor to uh, to be working with Microsoft over the last 
year and a half or more. And uh, their product suite just gets better and better and better. And uh, from Outlook to SkyDrive, AKA OneDrive, that's not a secret, is it? No. OneDrive is not a secret yet? No, it's Outlook. It's not. It's today's news. Sign up to OneDrive for 100 gigs of storage, but that's not what Lisa's here to tell us about. <laughs> um, yeah, so she over here. So it's cool. Lisa's like a frequent flyer from Seattle to SF New Tech. Okie dokie. Awesome to see some familiar faces here today. Uh, for the people who haven't gotten a chance to meet yet, my name's Lisa Abdelova. I'm a product marketing manager for Windows Consumer Apps and Services, and I'm very excited to be here today to tell you what's new with Bing. Um, so as you guys know, um, I'm, okay, so raise your hand if you've heard of Bing before. Okay, um, raise your hand if you search for something at least once a day on anything. <laughs> hey, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I'll try and change your mind about that in the next few minutes. Um, how about if you search more than two times a day? More than five times a day? Okay, okay. So um, for us at Bing, our central mission is to help you spend less time searching and more time actually getting things done. And to that end, we're always experimenting with new ways of closing the gap between what you're actually typing into your search query and the task that you're ultimately trying to do. And the reality is um, what we're actually up against is that search is a habit. And for anyone who's tried to you know, quit smoking before, or start going to the gym more, you know that habits are hard to break and they're hard to start. But our team has been working really hard. And um, as you may have heard, our search share in the States is actually going up. And we're at 18% now. And thank you. Um, and to put that into perspective a little bit, Twitter's usage share in the States is 18%. So, um, when we think about what's awesome about search engines is that now answers are always in front of us. They're, you know, at our fingertips. And whether you're trying to remember the name that's on the tip of your tongue or you're, you know, trying to win a debate with your friends, um, Bing's constantly um, finding new ways to deliver your, res your results in a way that goes beyond just being, um, you know, a bunch of blue links. So now I want to show you um, some of the reasons that I think that our um, Bing's popularity is on the way up. And the first part of it is I think the Bing.com homepage. And so you'll see that, um, so raise your hand if you've been on this page before. Okay, raise your hand if you've been on this page in the last like six months. Okay, cool. Um, so this image changes daily. And right now it's themed around the Olympics, but other days it'll be things, you know, these iconic images. And it's pretty nice because, you know, when you're kind of heads down, stuck in work, it's nice to see these kind of refreshing images that remind you there's more of a world out there. Um, you're also able to, you know, learn different things. It'll tell you little notes. Um, you're also able to download these pictures. You're able to, you know, look them up and see different things. And what you'll see here is a, you know, first run of what an actual, you know, SERP on like search engine results page looks like on Bing. And that's the snapshot that tries to predict not only what you're putting into your search query, but everything that you're actually trying to find out. 
Um, so that might be you know, general information um, pulled from Wikipedia, but also different things that are pulled in from you know, social results and et cetera. Um, but going back to that homepage, what else is cool is that it'll always run these um, top trending news topics. So in between your you know, five plus searches a day, you'll be able to see what else is going on out in the world, which is, I think, pretty cool too. Um, one of my favorite things about Bing also is that it's awesome across devices. Um, it's not just something that works awesomely on Windows. It's something that looks beautiful on an iPad. It's something that looks beautiful on an iPhone. Um, and you can do everything like you can talk into your phone and it will pull up search results for you. It also, as I'm sure most of you guys already know, Bing actually powers Siri. Um, so in the spirit of iOS, the theme here today. Um, uh, so now I want to show off some of the things that I think are especially cool in terms of you know, searches that look pretty cool on Bing. So one of them is videos. So who looks at videos online? Yeah, OK, cool. Um, so what Bing does pretty well here is that you'll see tabs like this one where it'll literally pull up all of the viral videos that are running right now. And um, since we apply a lot of the technology that runs on our actual search algorithm into, what, into our video search capabilities, is that I've heard people say that it's actually easier to find things on Bing video than it is on YouTube. And I mean, that's, you know, don't quote me on that, but um, I, I think that what it's able to do is pull up the things that are really the most popular as opposed to you know, the things that are the most views, because that's not always the same thing. Um, there's also things like you're able to pull up images, like for example, so I'm, I'm from San Francisco, but I moved to Seattle for Microsoft a while back, and the thing that I miss the most about, um, about the city is Ocean Beach. So not only do you get to see these beautiful images, right, and you can, you know, you can pull them up. There's actually Pinterest integration, so you can, you know, pin this on your Pinterest board. You can make it, you know, full screen. You can even play it as a slideshow of your search results. Um, but what else runs here is the really good suggestions here on the side. Um, and I don't know if you guys have been to these places, but they're all beautiful recommendations. And extending on that part, you'll see that Bing also runs a lot of different apps on Windows 8. Like for example, travel right here. Um, so where would you guys wanna go? Where do you wanna explore out of these places? Where? Australia. Am I missing? Oh. <laughs> we can search Australia. We're going, oh, we're going to Australia. <laughs> um, so here you'll see it pulls up an overview of the city. Um, you know, it has the map. You can even find, you know, book flights, find hotels, all through Bing technology. It even has, you know, currency translations here, weather, photos. And one of the coolest things here is this panorama view. So you can literally explore the different landmarks of these cool cities using Bing's technology. You can also do things like Bing Maps. So this right here, this search charm, is also powered by Bing. It's pretty awesome. So you can, on Windows 8.1, it's just, I'll, I'll show you guys over there if you come find me. Um, but you're also able to pull up things like this, um, where it'll find you exactly where you are, and then be able to pull up you know exactly what it looks like, and even pull in traffic and et cetera as well. But one of the other things, oh, here, let me show how that traffic part looks. Um, but before I close off, I want to show you guys one of the coolest things about this. So have you guys been hearing buzz about House of Cards coming out recently? So I've been hearing a lot of things about it, and if I'm using Bing to decide whether that's something that I actually want to look into and start watching, 
one of the coolest things is that not only does it pull up this spotlight right here where it pulls in, you know, general information, when, how long has the series been running, who's the cast, et cetera, but it also runs a social search. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I'll show you guys over there. I guess this wasn't connected to my Facebook, but it's awesome. It literally pulls in Facebook statuses from my friends, and you'd be able to see that five or six of my Facebook friends had all said something about House of Cards in the last like couple of months. Um, and another piece of it is that you actually also get rewards for every search that you run on Bing. Um, and you can use those rewards to um, bring in things like Amazon gift cards or even you can uh, exchange them in to uh, empower digital literacy in schools around the world and to try and make Bing more than a search engine. Um, and now I will encourage you all to please tweet at us, um, hashtag meet Bing, you'll see here. Um, my team and I are actively watching and, and listening um, through that Twitter feed to hear especially what our you know, you know, sponsored meetups attendees think about our products. Um, any ideas, suggestions, criticisms, whatever it is, let us know. Um, and I encourage you guys to come grab a notebook from us. We'll try and pass them out over here and play around and really meet Bing in the back there. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Excellent. I think I'm gonna use Bing now. Okay, Mr. Paul Kent, come on up. So uh, like I said before, this is a special event. It, it's a run up to a very special thing we're doing at Macworld with Macworld. Okay, let's watch Lisa trip down the stairs, hold on. Thank you, Lisa. Um, where do we begin on this one? So uh, at the beginning, long, long time ago. No. Um, you know, I'll start with an anecdote. How's that sound? So circa 2005 or something, I'm lucky enough to get like front row at Macworld and Steve Jobs is talking, releasing something. John Mayer is playing guitar. It's a garage band, and I'm taking pictures. And I got some awesome pictures of Steve standing there with a big Apple logo behind him. Didn't think much of it, put it on my Flickr stream, and it was done. I checked my stats like two years later, and like that was like the number one picture with regard to views. I'm like, what the hell happened here? Turns out that particular photo was, I don't want to say swiped, but it, the Creative Commons license had it, uh, somebody had borrowed it, borrowed it, or put it up on Wikipedia under Steve Jobs. And I did a 10 eye search and then found my photo all over the friggin' web based on that particular photo. It was really, really wild. So come full circle, I get a phone call a couple of months back from our friends at Macworld saying, hey, let's do something cool together. And that was the beginning of Six About to Break. So Paul Kent is the GM for uh, Macworld iWorld at IG IDG. Is that the best way to say it? A good way to say it? Um, and we, uh, we actually kicked off all of the excitement at our holiday party uh, a couple of months back, and this is the, the kind of the second little push we're doing uh, to narrow in on the dozens and dozens of applications we've been receiving for people who think they're hot shit and have the next product about to break in the Apple marketplace. And we're going to choose six of those and showcase them live at Macworld on March 27th. Um, and tonight, one of these guys, based on your input, is going to find themselves on that stage. So I don't think you have to say anything anymore. <laughs> anyway, Paul, thank you. Thanks for having me, Miles. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing tonight? Glad to be here with you. Now, how many people here are, have been in San Francisco more than 10 years? That's actually not that many. That's interesting. So uh, how many people here have heard about our little show called Macworld iWorld? That's great. So Macworld iWorld, this is actually the 30th year that we've been presenting Macworld in San Francisco. It, it was two coasts, but really, uh, it was two coasts for a while, but Macworld has been a part of the Apple landscape as long as there's been a Mac, really. And so uh, as the world has evolved, really, our job has been uh, to make sure that the show stays vibrant. And there's no better way to stay vibrant than connect with people like Miles, who are intimately involved with 
people like you who are doing the absolute coolest thing. We had a, a really interesting chat with a large VC company yesterday who was talking about his portfolio of app companies, and he said it really well. He said that really the app developer is uh, the new renaissance man. You know, really the art in the world is coming from app developers now, and I, and I think that's really quite true. Some of the most beautiful things that are so meaningful to people come from the app development community. So how do we get that involved with, uh, with Macworld iWorld? We've done a few things. We've done um, something really interesting. I guess in the largest sense, Macworld iWorld is a marketplace. It's a marketplace where people who make cool products can find people who want to buy cool products or people who want to tell other people about cool products. That's really what we've been doing for 30 years um, all around the Apple space. And um, with regards to app developers and iOS developers, um, we do a few interesting things to encourage you to want to participate with us. We've created this area called Appalooza. It's an app garden where there'll be about 100 app developers. The 100 greatest app developers, in my opinion, will be showing their products. And who will they be showing it to? Well, there's three things that make it interesting for you guys to come and be a part of the show, whether as part of Six About to Break or, you know, if you're not part of Six About to Break, if you want to consider, you know, what the show might be able to offer you. It's, it's three basic things. One is media. Pretty much anybody in the world who covers the Apple space comes to Macworld iWorld. We have about 550 media people, not just, you know, the bloggers and podcasters, but also, you know, Wired, um, all of the major broadcast outlets come to the show. Um, things that happen at Macworld get picked up worldwide. It is what is the vibrancy in the, in the Apple market space. So media is a great opportunity for you. The second thing is biz development. It might be, um, it might be venture. It might be uh, talent. Uh, it might be strategic relationships. All these are possible when you put everybody with a common interest under one roof at one time. We live in this virtual world you know, where we're doing a lot of business and creating a lot of relationships virtually. The face-to-face -face relationships certainly have greater impact in a world where uh, so many things are happening virtually. So it's a great opportunity. A lot of venture firms walk our floor looking for the next great thing. Um, a lot of uh, institutional buyers, a lot of uh, enterprise. If you're in the enterprise space, we do a lot with getting Apple's tools uh, uh, integrated into the enterprise space. So biz dev is a really good opportunity for you to be involved with the show. And then the last thing is um, there's pretty savvy users. If someone's going to come to our show, they're kind of the top of the pyramid of the most impassioned Apple users. So if you want to get great feedback about your app from some pretty smart people who you know, look at a lot of apps, um, it's a great opportunity. So this Appalooza area is really fantastic. It doesn't require you to be a big uh, marketing-driven organization. You pretty much can walk in to one of these stands with an iPad or an iPhone. You don't have to know anything about trade shows. You don't have to know anything about battling with unions. You don't have to know anything about booths. Uh, you just walk in and you start demonstrating, and we will provide the audience for you. So that's um, really what the show is all about. Six About to Break is really, really, really exciting. It is um, a way for us to showcase the vibrancy and innovation that's happening in the app marketplace. A lot of interest. We already have um, partnerships with Fast Company, with VentureBeat. We have great sponsors that are taking part in supporting the event. Um, again, it's a celebration of the app culture and bringing six of the great ones. There's six about to break big. Uh, maybe you're the next WhatsApp, right? So uh, could happen. Um, so anyway, that's Macworld iWorld. We hope you'll come. There's a nice offer on the card you got when you walked in if you want to go to the conference. If you want to just walk the trade show, it's like, it's like $10 right now if you sign up on the website, so it's not terribly expensive. It's pretty easy to do. If you're interested in showing your product, even if you're not part of Six About to Break, I'll be around if you want to talk about that. Um, and I'd love to tell you about how to get your products involved. But um, it's all about innovation and, uh, and interesting things, fascinating things, passionate things that are going on in the iOS marketplace. So we hope you'll be a part of it. We're actually going to give away a couple passes, right? All we need you to do is send out a tweet. Be clever, be interesting, be, uh, be, be iOS-like in your tweets, and send it out with the hashtag SFNTMacworld, and we'll pick three to give away some passes to the show. So that's my pitch. Hope you'll be part of it. We want everybody to come and enjoy. Come see Miles on stage at Macworld iWorld, and uh, thanks for your time, everyone. Thanks, Miles. Thank you, Paul. Excellent, yeah. So you've, we've got our tweet wall going, if you haven't noticed. So to get up onto the tweet wall, you need to tag uh, SFNT and to enter into uh, to possibly win a pass tonight uh, to Macworld, uh, tweet with the hashtag SFNT Macworld. We're going to randomly throughout the night throw this up, and if your tweet ends up up here with FNT Macworld, you're going to win. One, two, three, boom. Cool? Yeah. Nice. All right.
Um, and lastly, before I forget, I should have said this first, we are streaming this uh, event live tonight. So please maybe make your first tweet, uh, if you haven't tweeted already, to invite people in the room and join us. Uh, we can, uh, they can view it at sfnewtech.com. And this is big thanks to uh, Jimmy G, uh, manning the console and the cameras and uh, so much more. Thank you, Jimmy. Okay, but you guys want to see some uh, some app? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Okay, motion picture, come on up. Mo mo motion portrait, excuse me, motion portrait. We've got John and uh, Yuni. Hello. I don't know how close this is supposed to be to my face. All right. Uh, so my name is John, and I'm from Motion Portrait. Uh, I run business development uh, in the U.S. And this is Junichi Fujita, who is the CEO. Uh, I guess since this is live streamed, uh, our team in Japan is watching. Ohayou gozaimasu. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, thank you, Miles, SF New Tech team, sponsors, for giving us this opportunity. I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, what you're seeing is a demo of our technology. We basically have the power to animate a front-facing photo. So what you're seeing is animation based on just one photo. Um, I'll jump into the app for the second half of this presentation. So that's the JPEG. And first, we're going to show you some, besides animating the photo, we already know the facial features kind of based off our technology. And so we're able to, you know, let's say you're interested in trying on new glasses. We already know right off the bat. And look, oh, those look nice. Uh, maybe you're not interested in glasses or sunglasses, and we can show you what you're going to look like with a new hairstyle or earrings. <laughs> so, and, and it's following. Or maybe you're interested in channeling your inner animal. So these are just kind of examples of things that we can do after we've animated your photo. Uh, our next step is we'll show you another photo uh, we're going to animate somebody you're probably familiar with, President Obama. And like I said, that's based off one JPEG photo. Uh, the cool thing we can do now is uh, you all heard him talk, but I bet you've never heard him talk like this. Oh. Portrait is a technology used to make natural and various facial animation only from one photo. Or maybe he's yes, in the mood. Yes, I do. Ooh. And to be honest, Maybe he's in the mood to sing a little bit. Huh. All right, and so moving on. You've seen him sing, you've seen him do all this. Now maybe you want to become an avatar and alien. Instead of just animating yourself, if you have a mascot or some sort of uh, person that you want to mess yourself with, we can also do that. So let's see the next one. Oh, here. And all these examples that we're showing you, the functionality, the features that we've shown you so far are still useful for these cases. Oh, that's a pretty alien. And this next example is scary. Uh, and then also maybe if you want to see what you look like as a dog. All right, so now we're going to switch to the app. So that's why you guys are all here about. Uh, we are working on an app right now called MP Movie. And the content that we're going to show you tonight is not actually going to be on the, the application because we're working on a Ninja app. Uh, but the, we're still, that hasn't launched yet. So we're going to show you. This is a little different. So far you've seen animated photos, but now you're going to see an animated photo mapped onto a video. So with our technology, this all sits directly on the device. There's no connecting to a server. And it, the technology is roughly five megabytes. And so what you're seeing is as simple as taking a, the photo, and maybe maybe Miles wants to be a rock star. Who knows? Maybe maybe we're helping him live his dream. 
and this is all happening in real time. So that's based off this one facial, one photo that we took at the beginning of the night. I think it looks pretty good. All right, uh, we have one more example. So I have a buddy out there, Tony. I took a picture of his face earlier, and I think he's always wanted to go to Japan. And I'm really interested in helping him kind of achieve that. And so what we're going to do is let him be more of like a King Kong style and uh, climb Tokyo Tower. So what you're seeing now is also content that's in Japanese. And one of the areas that we're looking to partner is for content creation. So if you have cool, if uh, you're a company that has cool video or cool animation, we're interested in developing apps with you. Or in the future, we're also going to be launching an SDK. So if you're an app developer out there, a mobile developer, we will be launching a self-service SDK where you can play around with all this technology, integrate it into your app, uh, and, and build your own applications yourself. So, wow, four and a half minutes. That was good. I feel good about that. So thank you very much for uh, listening to me talk about this. We're a team in Japan, 16, but we now have an office in San Francisco as of the end of last year. So thank you. Nice work, guys. OK, so you guys must have some questions. Let's hit it. Raise your hands high. Don't be shy. That we have one right down here. Where we go? How do you make money? <laughs> Good question. So we've been around since 2007. Uh, a lot of our uh, revenue has come via partnering with ad agencies. So agencies will develop campaigns for brands. Uh, you may have seen some. We did one on Facebook for uh, True Blood. Uh, we did one for Intel, and we've also, I didn't show you the full features that we've done, but we have some agent simulations where uh, we've developed, helped develop campaigns around uh, healthcare or retirement funds, showing you what you'll look like as you get older. So you'll look old, but you'll have a lot of money. So that's one example. Uh, also, ads and applications. Right over, oh, he's, he's right there. Right back here. Hello. So with your services that, do you have any um, enterprise Integrate enterprise level service integration for say help desk or shopping assistant or anything like that. So we have done some uh, proof of concept and uh, actually we launched on on the web for a couple of companies where they want like a virtual assistant. What companies? In Japan. What companies? Uh, glasses. Uh, glasses company. And. And uh, uh, hairstyle. Uh, you know Adherence, we company? So Adherence is a hair company, uh, product company that used our technology for that. We had one right up, or over there too. What's your most popu popular mobile app that utilizes this technology? Um, our most popular app thus far is Zombie Booth. You guys may have seen it. Uh, same type of technology, did this to my face. Uh, and that has over 20 million downloads. So, When you upload a photo, do you have to do any editing, or is it just automatic? It just upload it. Uh, that's one of the competitive advantages that we see is we already understand where all the facial features are. So I, I told you earlier, but I'm, I'm animating all my kids' teddy bears and freaking them the hell out. We do have a bunch of apps on the App Store right now, but we're really pushing forward with a couple of new apps in the next couple of months. When is, when is your next push? When is this app up? Uh, so the next two apps that we're launching is, one is, we haven't decided the name of it, but it's based on ninja, uh, ninja content. So it's going to be maybe dancing ninjas, things like that, where you can upload your face in, your, in, in the video. Uh, we're also working on one around caricatures. So not only just exaggerating the face, but there's animation around it, and then also the sharing functionality and things like that. So that's the King Kong one, too? That's the same? The King Kong one is actually pre content that we previously had. So we just we put that onto the application for the demo purposes. Got it. Right now, you guys are a huge upgrade on the elf dance type <laughs> of uh, Thank you. ads. But that's where you guys are today. What about a year, two years from now? So uh, I can tell you kind of like we, from the last year, we've jumped to being able to do all this 
directly on the device. Previously, you had to connect to a server, so it took a lot more time. Uh, right now, we do have R&D teams working, looking into uh, things like augmented reality uh, applications or digital signage, uh, maybe using geofencing to understand where you are and then having a, a bus stop uh, basically sign interacting with you, things like that. And I think I'm looking towards the person that asked. Oh, we. Yeah, I'm, um, you're in next space, right? Yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think I saw you like 4 o'clock in the morning once, work, <laughs> working hard. Um, That's right. What's the integration process like? So currently, uh, you, we work with you and we provide a custom SDK. But right now, we're working on simplifying the whole process where you just download the SDK. It's native on iOS. And so then you integrate it in your code. And if you have any more technical questions, Junichi can answer those also. Can you become like the go-to place for anyone who wants to have an ad that features somebody who's dead or like Obama where you don't have the rights to it? Can you do that? Uh, I'm sorry. So uploading anybody's photo and then commercially or? Yeah. In, in, order to, in order to create a marketplace for this, can you be the go-to folks where if I want to have an ad that features somebody who I couldn't get? Oh, okay. Because they're either dead or I don't have the rights. Right, right. You know? um, I don't think that's the direction we're going. Uh, we don't have those relationships in place. If we were to partner with somebody who, who had that, then it'd be a different story, but yeah. All right. Looks like we're out of time. All right. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Excellent work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, where's Fabian? Coming up, sir. Have we met your expectations with regard to Kickass yet? Okay. Just check. So, point this guy in here. Are you in? Okay, while he plugs in, uh, let's see if we can give away a uh, pass to Macworld. All right, if the next tweet has the hashtag, you win. Nope, but Bing wins. We'll give it another go round. Fabian, just let me know when you're ready. The gnome to keeper. Nice. Another tweet for Bing. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Okay, let's just let this spin out one more time. Let's see. Fran on the rocks. All right, Bing, three for three. Nice. Okay, let's hit it. So, uh, what do we give you this time? We'll give you a D. Hi everyone, um, I'm Fabian and I'm the founder and CEO of Five Run. So what, what we do is, is what many refer to as bringing the Apple Store shopping experience to the traditional brick and mortar retailer. Um, so everyone here likes online shopping. Uh, it's, it's easy, it's fast. Uh, you see something you want to buy, you can hit buy it now, you can save it for later, you can research it. But who here likes shopping at Best Buy or Office Depot or something? It's just it's just not fun, it's not interesting, it's not unique. But there's a reason why we don't like it. It's not just because we hate walking into a place or we've all turned anti-social. There's actually a fundamental reason why that happens. So short story, so let's, let's go down memory lane. Um, in the 1990s, this was the biggest evolution that happened for retailers. These kind of green screen terminals. Because the, the, before that, from 1920 to 1990, you had these clickety-clack machines. Right? And in fact, some retailers still have those. But this was the biggest innovation, yet in 99% of retailers that you walk into, 
they still have that. It, it really hasn't evolved much. So the situation is something fundamentally different happened and earlier is that online shopping arrived and our expectations, in other words, I, I would even term it as our religious beliefs when it comes to retail shopping got fundamentally changed because of online shopping. So one quick thing, this is our expectations on the left-hand side. We expect an unlimited product now, we expect to uh, buy it now, and we expect deep product data. How many times you're inside of a retail store, you're trying to decide which blender to buy, one costs $50 more and you're wondering, which one should you buy, right? You have no idea, just, just a label on the actual store shelf. You ask the associate, they know even actually much less than you do, and, and nine times out of 10 walk away from you. So it, it tends to be, our, our expectations don't align with the reality, which the reality is that the current retail experience um, has none of our expectations, right? And so it, therefore retailers get frustrated, uh, consumers get frustrated and retailers lose revenue. So we change that. How do we do that? So from our software, we actually, we actually provide a tablet within the hands of the associate. So you can walk into a store, whether it's a jewelry store, it's a um, sporting goods, shoes, apparel, any type of, even a car dealership, and they can sell you not just the products that are on the actual shelf, but they can sell you the products from their online catalog and the same shopping cart. So let's walk through a simple transaction. I'm a guy, uh, this was actually a real life story, right? I'm, I'm a guy, I was looking, I was in, in the midst of getting married. Um, I went to several jewelry stores. Uh, asking about different, I, I had kind of settled my mind on what type of uh, cut of the diamond I wanted. So I was asking all these different questions. Well, do you have this one and this price and this one and that one? And, you know, they're looking through the back. And at the end of the day, they could only sell me what they had on the shelf. Of course, they have much more in different stores from their online catalog, the whole nine yards. So in that scenario, the associate could have went through her, her spiel, use our, our software at Five Run to actually sell me one of her products in their online store and then perhaps could have upsold me on a pair of earrings that are physically there. What she would have done is scan the barcode for the physical earrings, added the uh, product that's from the online store and the same shopping cart. I would swipe my credit card once. I would have similar to this. I would have a, I could sign on the actual device and then I would have a receipt email to me and I walk out with the earrings and then the ring gets shipped to my home later or possibly even within the hour. So. In, in essence, what we're combining is the best of what we love from the traditional um, store, which is the help and people and the property, but also also combining it with the online experience behind that. So some of our customers uh, are top retailers, uh, jewelry companies, fashion apparel, uh, car companies. Uh, we primarily work with, uh, I would say, in enterprise level retailers, typically with 100 plus stores or so. And um, uh, all this is nice and pretty, but none of this would be exciting if it didn't synchronize with the retailer's existing backend. So all of that existing retail technology, everything that the retailer currently has, we synchronize with that. And from the retailer's perspective, they just simply pick up an iPad, put Five Run on it, and they can start selling and having a, a more advanced uh, sales experience inside their physical store. Um, so on our side, we're, what we're looking for is specifically we have a ton of customers, and uh, if you have connections to retailers, we'd love to meet them. Uh, but I think what we're more importantly doing right now as a result of the traction, I think we're live now in uh, seven different countries from Copenhagen to London to here in Palo Alto and Corte Madera. And so we're raising a round of funding. We're raising uh, a 1.2 million seed round of funding. So if you're writing checks, you should uh, come and talk to me afterwards. Excellent, thank you. All right, I'm gonna run around with a microphone. Who's got questions for Fabian? So is this just uh, when you're inside a physical store that you can purchase these items or can I also be at home and access the inventory? So, so the, the, first, the first phase of our vision that we're targeting is uh, transforming the traditional retail experience. In other words, that brick and mortar uh, physical experience you have inside the store, right? Um, so what, what we actually claim is 
<clears throat> what we actually claim is uh, turning the sales associates into superheroes. Uh, the next phase of our vision, um, we, could, we will potentially go down that path because ultimately we believe uh, commerce is not about e-commerce, it's not about in-store commerce, it's just about commerce. So the purchase decision starts at home and should, it should be carried on when you actually enter the physical store. So what is it going to cost to turn them into superheroes? It's, it's actually very straightforward. Our, our business model is a software as a service business model, and uh, retailers typically pay about $1,000 uh, ballpark per device um, on an annualized basis. And a typical retailer that we work with typically has about 100 to 150 stores and needs three to four devices per store. Database. Oh. <laughs> so with retailers, I know just from talking to some people that work on like websites for large retailers, like they'll have one database for the web team and they'll have a whole completely independent web experience and different data for the web experience. And then they'll have another database for all the stores that the stores are accessing through their like point of sale type of register right. thing. How do you deal with that when... That's a, that's a fantastic question. And, you know, nine times out of ten when we're sitting in front of a, you know, major enterprise retailer, we say very succinctly, this, you, you can get that within 30 days within your store. They look at us like we're crazy. But the reason why that can happen is because w via our cloud platform, we have plugins that could synchronize with all of, with the most typical existing retail systems. So think about like IBM, NCR, um, those, those type of guys without, in other words, use Fiverr and without needing to replace those systems, right? And so these plugins can support that. Those plugins could even support fully custom uh, made retail systems like mainframes, uh, AS400s, and things like that. Yes. Uh, just with a uh, quick question uh, about the jewelry app you use in the demo. Uh, is that, uh, uh, has that been developed natively on iOS or is it like a web app? No, yeah, so uh, all of our products are uh, native, it, native developed, and uh, it's fronted by our cloud platform on the back end. But they're 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 native, native iOS. Okay. Are you getting any pressure uh, from retailers to work on other OS or other devices? That's a good question. Um, I would say here in the states, the most common I would say is Microsoft. Um, is, I think, the biggest pressure that we have. Um, and we actually love Microsoft also, too. A Apple's fantastic, but so we're, we're engaging with them at, and potentially uh, a couple of go-to markets. I'd say in Europe, um, we, we hear a lot from retailers that they love Apple, but Android seems to be a platform of choice when they're considering rollouts in general. Thank you. I'm back here. Anybody with a hand, raise it high. <laughs> All right, we have a, yeah, is there somebody? I think he's just leaning. <laughs> and from this vantage point, anybody? All right, Fabian, let's okay. well, thank you all. call it that. Thanks, good. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so number three. Where are Tony and Aaron? Now, again, if you didn't hear me before, if you're thirsty, no fear. There is a bar in the side room. But the taco truck did go away. I'm sorry. Let me plug you guys in. For live demo. Yeah, live demo. Woo! Who wants a t-shirt? Ladies. Ladies always get the short end of the swag stick. Ladies size t-shirt? All right, lady in the back. One more? Ladies t-shirt. Whoops, sorry. Hey, all right, so with Reverb, we want to solve a problem that I know all y'all have, which is too much content, not enough time. If you've got 10 minutes to refresh Twitter, are you sure you're going to see the one article that you need to see that day? If you've got five minutes for Facebook, are you going to see the article shared by a friend of yours that you really care about? Are you going to see some wackaloon political stuff that you just want to skim right over? 
And if you've got time to look at a real media outlet, are you going to dig your way through the sports section to find the articles on pro surfing, which is all you really care about? Probably not. And now our CEO and spokesmodel, Tony Tam, will perform the demo. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing is, I'm going to launch Reverb, and one of the principles that we have at this company is that if computers are so goddamn smart, they shouldn't ask you a whole bunch of questions to use the apps. So what I just did is I launched Reverb, which is a discovery app. And discovery meaning I get to find the stuff I'm interested in. The thing I first see is something we call a word wall, which shows us different ideas. And instead of asking me what I'm interested in, I just tap and read. So in here, I tapped on business and economy, because I'm a business person, right? We're in a company. So in here now, I see articles. I found things that are talking about this topic of business and economy. I can scroll through here. Through here. I can look at articles. I can get a sense of what we're talking about directly without reading anything. I can then tap on any of these and see all kinds of stuff that's happening. Like, I did not know. Someone's favorite something. Um, Facebook buys what, WhatsApp for $19 billion, right? So now we're in this clean reader. I can look at content without actually having to sift through and find out <clears throat> how, to, how to find it over the web. And the discovery aspect of what we do, at the end, we don't show things that are just tangentially related based on popularity. We've extracted the ideas that are in the article. So in here, Mark Zuckerberg, we're talking about Snapchat. I can continue reading and exploring and finding more things that, that are of interest to me. Let me come back to this word wall. And the first thing that you see now is that, like I said, computers should be smart, right? It's gone and updated itself with things relevant to what I looked at. So Mark Zuckerberg, mer mergers and acquisitions. And the more I read, this gets smarter, right? Now, as Aaron said, um, people don't fit necessarily in one little cookie cutter spot. It shouldn't just be business and economy. It shouldn't just be WhatsApp, even though we're in San Francisco. If I look at something like, um, if I'm interested in surfing, right? Actually, forget surfing. I'm interested in big wave surfing. A reverb has gone and, and scoured the web and found the most relevant things about what big wave surfing and put them in a readable format based on the, what is in the article, not just what's mentioned in it. So there might not be any mention of big wave surfing, but we've extracted that this is something about catching the biggest wave ever. So I can explore content like this. And again, as I keep reading, this gets smarter. My word wall updates. And the content follows me. Right. Switching over to another view on content. So that's a long tail view. A global view would be things that are trending, news, right? Things that are important in the world where you don't want to basically look at a, um, a subset of it. So what's happening in Syria? I don't know what's happening in Syria, but it looks like buildings are getting blown up, right? So there's things that are happening in the world that you just need to know no matter what. You shouldn't be filtered away from that sort of thing. Right? And lastly, I'm going to show something that's really important. Um, I'm going to look at uh, my social feed. So I'm going to connect with Twitter. And what it's going to do is then show me all the articles that are coming through my feed in this clean format. Again, I can read any of them very easily. And what's super powerful is, like Aaron was saying, in Twitter, if I, if I don't refresh or I don't pull to refresh in any amount of time, I'm going to miss something. But what Reverb has gone and done is aggregated all the articles from my feed based on the articles, based on the idea. So if I don't care about people tweeting about weird things, I can read just about really exciting things like enterprise software, right? Saving the dry, lifeless soul of enterprise software. Okay. So <clears throat> what we say is that you are what you read, and you shouldn't be confined to a little box. And just to show you how interesting some things can be, if I look up Grumpy Cat, right? There we go. Pictures of cats are more popular than selfies, and here's why. So what Reverb is doing is it's not putting you in the filter bubble. It's not confining you to ideas. It's letting you go and read. It's, letting, it's helping the content follow you. I don't need to go search. I don't need to go scour the web. We're going to find the best stuff and present it in the fastest and easiest way possible to read. Thank you very much.
That's five minutes. Questions? Thank you, guys. OK. I have a question off the bat. Yeah. So I like your UI, but it almost seems like it's, it's for like folks with ADD in that I don't know what I'm going to click. I'm going to click the big one now, or I'm going to click this one. It's like it, 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 there's, there's, there's no apparent systematic approach on how you're consuming your news, but whatever maybe jumps out at you that you're going to click. Yeah. Think of it, I, I click on shit all day long like that, so, but this is good for me, but is that, is that like everybody? Think of it like this. What you read goes up to the left. As I stop looking at things, it drifts away to the right. If I don't care about chemical transformation, I can get rid of it. So what we don't want to do is make you work. We don't want you to have to work hard to say, this is what I want to read. This is the stuff I'm interested in. We want you to be able to read. And if you stop looking at it, it'll just drift away. So people can look at content different ways. You can look at it from words. And this exposes the ideas and the relationships between them. You can also look at it from the tiles. And we see people roughly, they have a preference. You can look at it this way too. And it's a little less of that words going everywhere ADD thing that Miles is worried about. So um, question over here. Over here on. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, in the absence of Google Reader, I think pretty universally across all my friends, there isn't really a good substitute other than you know, feed leads what I hear about the most. So it's kind of a, akin to what he was asking. Yep. If, if a person or consumer wants more control, what are your thoughts about that? Do you, do you feel like there's a gap in the absence of Google Reader having died? Yeah, I think Google Reader growing away is really interesting and it kind of signifies what we're going after, which is saying that channels are just very hard for content, right? New York Times is not your source of all information now. Like you might get some, some things in New York Times, you might get sports stuff in Sports Illustrator, right? It's not just about models and swimsuits. So I think that the, the idea is that control should be based on interest and should be based on relevance. And if you don't understand content, you can't do either of those. So I don't think that a social network necessarily should be the only way of, of, of organizing content. It should be based on machines being smart and understanding based on your, what you read and what you're interested in and what you signal to it, what it should surface. So Erin has a fantastic blog about dresses, and she talk, talks about robots sometimes. If I subscribe to, I probably wouldn't subscribe to it. It's about dresses. But I can get the parts about robots that I'm interested in. Right? So I think that the, the world should be about ideas and content rather than channels. It's very, it's very slick. Um, as you learn you. more about the individual, I mean, how are you going to monetize this? What's your plans? Monetize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that took longer than I thought. This is Silicon Valley. What do we have to monetize, right? Yeah, no, so, fuck it. So, um, speaking of monetization, so we um, we actually um, one of the things that Reverb has created is this very nifty thing called Swagger, which is an API framework which connects servers, also connects clients like this iOS app. Now everyone knows my password. Um, but the interesting thing is that. This is powerful stuff, right? It's not just about content that comes in through readers. It could be about a vertical. It could be about products. It could be about other things. So I don't want there to be ads in here. I want enterprises, I want other companies to connect and use this kind of software in their own silos, in their own corporate content to take advantage of this power as well. I want readers should enjoy this, right? And that's valuable. And maybe we'll be like Ghostbusters and monetize happiness, right? Yeah, so, so we will connect companies with their own content to this engine, which could be separate from the content that you see in the app. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. The real answer is this is Silicon Valley. We don't have to worry about making money, but. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Okay. What's the It's called Reverb. It's only on iOS um, and only on iPad right now. Yeah, I was about to ask that. So um, I saw it. A demo earlier, earlier when and during the cocktail hour. I'm right here in the middle. Number six on free news right six. now, so you can find it yeah. easily that way. So uh, he stole my question about the business model. That was 
uh, first question, but kind of answered that. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you could elaborate on how the licensing would work and who would use it and how, how that would scale for you. The second is, uh, uh, are you planning to release this on, uh, um, on iPhone and desktop and uh, Android and everything else as well? It's, it's an Apple world, so we, we will have a phone version, of course. Right. Um, so uh, the, the way that we plan on, so the first question was about the, the licensing, the APIs, and that sort of thing. I mean, we've talked to a bunch of different people about how this can work for embedded apps, how it can work for um, uh, internal, like an SDK, so recommended content. Personalization as a service, that's something we do extremely well, and that's what this whole ward wall is showing, is it's a glimpse into what personal, personalization looks like. So we could personalize almost any type of content as long as it has digital text in it. We do very well with metadata. This is unstructured text that's found uh, on the web, but we work very well with metadata as well. We don't do really well with food and recipes and that sort of thing too. I know there was a second question. I'm not trying to ignore it, but I forgot what it was. Yes, that's right. So um, yeah, we will be making it smaller. But again, a good iPhone app isn't just a smaller version of an iPad app, so it's taking considerable time for us to make sure that it works the right way. Desktops. So there actually is a partial web version of this right now. So if you share content from here, any of this content can be shared out. Um, it will open in a uh, web view, which our um, courageous hackers out there can probably build a whole version of this by using the APIs in there. But there will be a, a web endpoint as well. Other questions? I know I've run out of time, but I'm happy to give up more demos in the back and answer any other things that might come up. Thank you. Right on. Much. Tony, thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call a one winner for the SFNT Macworld uh, hashtag contest. Where's Courtney? Yay, Courtney. Come find me later, okay? And let's, uh, let's roll, roll the dice one more time. What is that? And if the next one that comes up is not uh, SFNT Macworld, they don't lose. They win a drink. How does that sound? This is like remote control jubilee. Oh, Fran. Okay, you make the cut. Or Frano or Fran? Right on. Okay. Number two, and this next one, maybe number three, or a cocktail. Nice, where's Katie? Is Katie in the house? Katie? Maybe she's calling it in. Okay, one more. Court McQuaid, Courtney, you did this already, right? Same Courtney, yeah. She's retweeting Jasper's tweet. This is like incest, it's crazy. All right, let's move on. Uh, e is here from Orbius, and she's gonna show us recognition, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before I start, I'm saying that it's so interesting seeing the competition on stage. I was expecting to see my name, but it turned out to be very sad I was not the win. <laughs> yeah, so hi, we're Orbius. We offer integrated visual recognition solutions based in the cloud. What does that all mean, you ask? Well, before we go into the nuts and the bolts of our technology, let me show some of the recent trend of the internet world today. The age of big data is marked by an explosion of data in all shapes and forms. In particular, the total volume of photos and videos online is expecting to reach about eight zettabytes by 2015, which is doubling the number in 2013. However, our computer has not yet equipped with the ability to automatically and efficiently recognize what is being uploaded. 
tremendous business potentials remain hidden behind the photos and videos uploaded every minute. So at Orbis, we solve this problem by empowering computers to recognize faces, sceneries, objects all together in image as well as in uh, videos in real time. Well, seeing is believing. Like now, I would love to show one of our iOS application we built powered by our backend technology. It's called RecoEye. Use RecoEye is pretty simple. It's as easy as just snapping out a photo. So here you can see, you can take a picture or randomly select a photo from your album. Then our engine will tell you automatically what this photo is about, such as cat, food, beach, like party, and etc. How about everyone have interest in downloading right now and try what it will turn out to be? So here I can try with my phone, taking a snapshot of what we're seeing right now. It's very easy, just tap in the photo album, and then the results will show up on the screen. So probably some people in the front end can see that by taking the photo, it's actually showing the view as club, human, like nightclub, street, charts, a lot of things. It's interesting, and you more than welcome can try everything you want to take and to see what it turns out to be. Reco Eye turns your camera into an intelligent eye. It will provide a revolutionized way to discover and learn. For example, like this one. By taking a picture, we're not like saving the picture, but we also can automatically direct to the information you want to search. For example, it's automatically connect to a wiki page, so now you know everything about this adorable golden retriever. And it can do more than just taking photos. Like thinking about like by the computer, the engine automatically know what this photo is about. You can easily and insert an advertisement very naturally match up what is showing in the content and share it with your friends on social networks. And in the, in the meanwhile, earn a penny. So nothing more easier than earning money this way. And with record eye, uh, your phone can do a lot more than just taking photos. By taking photo intelligently, you can automatically recognize and organize all your photos in your photo album. So here you can say, this is my album. It shows I'm kind of outdoor person. And it shows I, I, want, I like to hang out with friends. I love flowers, so forth. This type of information helps you to know better what is your daily life looks like within a time frame. Or if you're a business owner, it also helps you to learn more about your customer, what they are usually uploading, and what their user behavior will be. So this is just an application we build to show off our technology as well as to change people's way using their daily life. But in the meanwhile, later we will also open the SDK for the RecoEye. It will be just as simple as a photo button. Every application can integrate that with their app, and every photo you take is so intelligent. You can do a lot of things on top of that, like what I showed before, like snap a picture and learn more by searching, linking to Wikipedia, maybe landmark linking to TripAdvisor, and so forth. And you also can earn money by sharing photos with the in-image native apps. And maybe you have some more brilliant ideas by using the metadata. And the third, it will provide a very powerful backend with all the metadata automatically generated to show uh, analytic results helping you know your life. And this is all. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Yi. Let's get this thing going here. Any questions? Okay, you guys know the drill. Eddie. Um, can this be applied to videos as well? Uh, which we? Your technology which analyzes the image and gives you kind of the percent what the content represents, can it be applied to video content as well? Uh, you mean can our technology also read in videos? Sorry, I didn't get that question. So your technology showed a, a use case where 
you upload an image and it tells uh -huh. you it's 10% beach, 5% family. Can yeah. you do the same thing with videos? Yes, exactly. As I mentioned in my first conversation, we are very strong not only to recognize images, but we also provide solutions for uh, analysis video in real time. We can add metadata like faces, people's emotions, their roughly age, races, as well as concept, object, all together within video. So I just took a picture of Miles and it shows me that it's 43% sure he's a person and 35% sure there's some espresso in that picture as well. Um, I was wondering how many different concepts and objects does your app recognize? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we are advanced technology provider, so except the face part, we currently offer our object and scene understanding API online, which recognizes around 2,000 different categories. Mm -hmm. And you can find a detailed documentation about which 2,000 in our website. There's like beach, food, dog, cat, even chinchilla. So uh, I downloaded the app too, and I tested on some of my older photos, and it did a pretty good job, actually. Thank you so um, much. Much better than the picture of Miles. But um, what are your plans on on increasing that catalog more than 2,000? Like, how far do you plan on going? What What's the rate? Mm -hmm. Actually, this question depends on two different aspects. One is business aspect, and the other is technical perspective. While talking about the business perspective, the 2,000 category we select, not only because currently we have the limitation only recognize those 2,000 category, it is more like the ideas and object people daily encounter ways. So we got the names from social networks as well from some like advertisement taxonomies. So that's where we got those numbers. We think this makes more sense for describing people's daily life. And of course, we can keep adding new categories in two ways. One is adding a total new category. It also can be defined by the customer. We also open API for people. They can train their own object for us to recognize. And in the other realm, we can also like doing the uh, subtitles for each category. For example, currently we do food, but later on we can split that to like 10 more like noodles, pizza, burger, like steak, a lot of things. So the variety can be expanded in different variety. Okay. Hi. Um, I've used the, um, uh, some of the other image by the search apps before. So the question is, uh, how do you differentiate yourself with uh, mobile uh, Google image search? Mm -hmm. So uh, talking about compare with other competitors, one, some, some of those uh, big guys like Google image search, which is people usually search on the website. We also offer image search capabilities, but that technology is different from what I'm showing today, the concept recognition. For searching an image, you can use different ways like search based on similarities. That means I taking a picture with this view, it will search out all the results with such like color kind of um, information and like people, like it, it seems like you, you do not have a good eyesight and you stand away from the photo, you look them look all similarly, so it's search based on similarity. And what we are doing right now is based on recognize. We can tell you this chair is a chair, so the search result will all relate you to chair, not only depending on whether the color or the structure looks similarly. That is why it is different. It's totally two technology. Okay, thank you so much. I think time is up. Yeah. Moving right along. Okay, we're over the hump, guys. We've got three more to go. Um, afterwards, we're gonna do uh, what we call our 60 second spots. That's an opportunity for you to grab this microphone and make a quick announcement. No more than 60 seconds, please. So if you're looking for funding, have an event to promote, God knows what else you're doing, and you wanna promote it, get on stage. It's a good opportunity. 
Um, also, I just want to, uh, after the next demo, I'm going to pull up the, the, the current results from our, uh, our investment app. Um, I think there are 25 of you in the room that are currently engaged. Let's double that number, guys, because 155 of you received the email. Please play along. These guys are counting on you and your wisdom. Um, OK, where is Carlos? Coming up, my friend. Excellent. So Carlos is uh, prepared with his own dongle, which I love. He just walks up here, plugs in, takes over. I'm from Spain, so if you don't understand some words, just pretend you do and smile, please. <laughs> um, YouTube sucks for learning. It's not optimized for educational content. I'm going to do a quick demo with YouTube first, then before going to my app. You type Excel, for example, to learn some videos related with this software, uh, sorry, Microsoft, but you will get over 1.7 million results. That is crazy. I'm not saying you're not going to find what you want. I'm just saying it's probably very, very time consuming. So in addition to the time, it's really hard to rely on the content creator. So sometimes, sometimes you don't know if the person who is creating this content is a real professional or not. And furthermore, some of the videos that you will find on YouTube are very, very, very low quality. Those are the three main problems we are trying to solve with Flock. Flock is the biggest marketplace for online video courses in Latin America. On Flock, it's all about education. We have 14 different categories for learning that goes from online marketing, programming, to more lifestyle skills like design, yoga, cooking, or even sex. Uh, I would like to do a quick demo with a sex video, but I'm not allowed. So I I'll do it with cooking, OK? <laughs> For example, I'm going to click on this video to show you how to cook some tasty stuff. You can appreciate that this is very, very high quality. Not only that, but the expert that created this content is a professional cook. And we know that because we curate the content. So after two years, that we realized that learning is much more than just videos. I think we can do something much better. That's why we put together amazing instructor uh, that is a series of videos plus additional materials plus reviews. I'm going to show you. When you go to Flock and you find a course like this, you will get always a free trailer where you can check the course before making a purchase. You can see the description of the teacher and the description of the course. Different chapters. Chapters are small videos from two to five minutes to make it very, very easy to consume through mobile. And then you can also see the reviews from previous students to make sure you are not getting crap. <laughs> so in addition to users consuming videos, this is a marketplace. So there are people that want to upload content and make money. Our business model is the same as the App Store. Anyone can upload educational content, and then we make sure it makes sense from a technical point of view and from a learning point of view before making it public. Teachers set the price. And it's the same as the App Store. We get 30% and the teachers get 70%. We already have over 300,000 students and over 3,000 video courses. Our main demographic is Latin America, Spanish-speaking countries, and Portuguese-speaking countries, although we have some English content, especially for investors. <laughs> and the whole vision of Flock is to become the main destination for learning. The same way Yelp is the place for you to go to find a restaurant, or Uber to request a cab, or Airbnb to find a house, or YouTube to find videos of people dancing gangma style. You, uh, Flock is the place for you to learn anything, anywhere, from anyone. Thank you very much. Very nice, very quick. Let's do the next one now. Come on, we got nothing to lose. OK. I'm half joking. Raise your hands up for Carlos. 
I understood every word you said, so that's good. Eddie, I'm just going to give you a microphone for the rest of the night. So in Latin America, um, I'm imagining that YouTube is kind of your free competition. Uh, are these videos, they're hosted by your servers, right? How do you think of YouTube and, and how do you differentiate from them? Yes, this is the first question that my mom asked me when I told her the idea. Because actually YouTube is the biggest competitor, much more than any other learning platform right now. Because nobody else has cracked the model yet. And of course on YouTube you can find a lot of stuff good and not that good. So being very, very focused on education and high quality and offering much more than videos like discussion forums, additional materials, and potentially certifications, I think we can make a dent in the educational space. Here. So um, key, key to this, you've got great content, but key is your distribution. What's your distribution advantage? How do you intend to let people know that there's great, this great content out there? Are you an investor? <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn. <laughs> yes, um, this is a, a chicken and egg problem. So at the very beginning, we had to focus on the supply side to make sure we had enough good content. Then when we felt comfortable with the con quantity of content, then we were focused on the number of users. Now we are more focused on the content on and off. How long does it take for a video to get curated and processed and actually uh, after upload get onto your site? Right now, less than 24 hours. How big is your team? We are 15 people, 13 of them are in Spain. And if I tell you our burn rate, I can only say that this is like four engineers here in Silicon Valley. Good answer. Anybody else for Carlos? Go on, go on twice. Block. Thank you. Yes, uh, Danush is going to use that. Okay, uh, Greg. Yes, yeah, switch me over to. Uh, I want to. I want to show you guys something. So, we're we're running this grand experiment and putting the wisdom of the crowds uh, to work. And uh, so we have this voting app, which is going to send somebody to fame and fortune. And I just want to show you the, the current results as they are now. Because all you guys said you got the email, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. So the winning company right now is Hoover's Path. And they haven't even freaking presented yet. <laughs> Something is broke. That's you guys. We need to come on. Jesus Christ. The email was sent about 6 o'clock tonight, so you're probably in the room. It came from me. My name is Miles with a Y. And I know you guys have me set up to go right to spam, but come on. That's fine. That's fine. It's not working in what way? It said something went wrong. That's a good sign. That's not a good sign. Um, Okay. Uh, uh, yep. Password. Yeah. Let's double, I'll, I'll try to figure out the question. Uh, our CTO is watching from abroad, so he heard you just now, or maybe? Manuel, fix that. Yeah. To what? You need an eight character password. That's maybe one thing, I don't know. Hit, hit refresh, go to, go to sfntinvest.com and try it that way. For those who didn't get the email, and I know you guys all raised your hand, said you did, but if you didn't, you weren't shy. SFNT.com, excuse me, SFNTinvest.com is where you, you where you can log on, okay? 
And I need to give you a firm warning. Do not create multiple accounts or I will find you and kill you. Okay, let's be legit about this stuff. Okay, Danush with Sortly, the My Things app. There it is. Okay, my friend, when you're ready. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Are you awake? Very nice. Um, this is My Things App Inc. I'm the founder and CEO. It's a very small company we just started uh, six months ago. Though we have an app called uh, My Things, Where Are They? for about a year and a half. I was the only guy who wrote it, and it took off, uh, especially with women, um, but uh, with, with small businesses, etc. Uh, so I quit my job and I'm doing it full time. So now today, we are announcing a new name for the app called Shortly. It's very easy to remember and the tagline for it is Short Your Life. Now, what is this app? It's a inventory slash moving slash um, you know, small business uh, app that lets you sort your life. And uh, I'm going to show you a short demo using the data that I have around my house. Now, my wife loves collecting souvenirs. Wherever we travel, she is collected. In fact, she asks our friends and families also to bring souvenirs. So as you can imagine, I have a box full of souvenirs as well as the whole house I have a ton of them. Now, I'm going to catalog them using the app shortly. So as soon as you open the app, this is the screen that you will see. And in this screen, we're going to give you some starter ideas. You can use it for home, work. You can store your collection, say wine collection, or whatever is in your storage, or uh, move, et cetera. You can store it. Now, we, we, we often send you some messages like this, uh, quotes, et cetera, to keep you motivated on organizing. Now, let me get started. I want to start organizing my things. So let me start with typing my souvenir. And collection. So notice the auto completion there. Now, of course, I can add my photo, but I can do something cooler. We ship around 80 icons for you to categorize your things. And I want to have uh, the teddy bear. And with that, let me save. Oops. Let me save. And now what I want to do is I want to categorize further, right? So what is on display? So again, now what I can do is, of course, I can add all the photos uh, from my home. So here's my toy collection number one. Here's my toy collection number two. There. Here's my toy collection number three. There. Now I can save it. So that gets my collection. What I can do more cooler thing with this is now that I have these toys, I can reuse this photo to create further items to categorize. Now, I want to store about these elephants. So here is my elephant, I can, if I can spell it. And what I can do is I can pinpoint those elephants or whatever using this app to store it. Done. So here. So now, on display, I have elephants. Now, the other thing you can do is much cooler than what I showed you is this option where I can start outlining just like a color splash app that you would have seen earlier. So you could do like you could do all these cool things with it. And with black and white photographs, I, you know, isolated on one. So now um, that gets, uh, let me save it. Okay. 
So now, basically, you can create hierarchical database using this, this app. Now, the coolest part about this app is once you store it, you can search whatever you stored. But then the best part is that it has cloud. Whatever data you store gets stored in the cloud. And it has, if you've heard of an app called OnePass, FirstPass, et cetera, it has encrypted cloud where whatever you store gets encrypted in the cloud. Uh, so that's the best part. And, and for us, uh, as, a, as a business model, we use either the ad based on what you store for the free version or for the paid version. We would uh, do. Uh, we would, of course, encrypt encrypt your data. We won't look at what you have. Thank you, guys. All right. Let me reset the clock here. Remote control number eight. Here we go. Okay, hands up for Janush. Eddie. The new MC of the show is Eddie. Let me see. Let me, let me read your tag. Eddie Bonk is a product manager at Tubular Labs. Thanks. Um, I had an e-commerce startup, and it failed. Inventory management was a pain in the ass for me. Um, have you thought about small business applications for this? Absolutely. Already, I have a lot of small businesses using. Think of uh, uh, mom and pop selling out of uh, their home, uh, say, in eBay as well as small businesses, uh, which essentially, which can hold, an, which can type into mobile, mobile phone, they are already using it, yes. You said at the beginning that it was mostly women that were using the, the older version of the app. Why is that? Or I, I guess I'm, it's, it's, I don't understand what I would use it for, why I would want to do an inventory of what's in my house, other than for the, like the insurance people, if it burned down or something. Uh, true, I think, I think that's, that's one of the largest uses. Um, but think of you are moving. So when you're moving, you have a ton of boxes. You can take a picture of those. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to show the moving part, so you can move within the app. So that'll, that's a huge application for us. And, uh, and if you have multiple homes, or say Airbnb, so if you're using Airbnb, you can inventory everything, and you can actually share it with the customer who's coming in, and they can actually search on where the spoons are, where the plates are, and immediately they'll know where it is with the photograph and all. So all of those applications. Yes, within the with the photograph. So somebody has to store it first, uh, like what, you, what I showed you, yeah. Hi, right, back here. Um, so you kind of alluded to this, but uh, do you have a means or hooks to enable one to sell their quote unquote cool stuff on eBay? Easily, uh, like a one click, oh, I want to sell this collection. Absolutely, yes. So uh, API, a a eBay APIs are available. We are definitely working on it to put it in. Uh, to put it in. in fact, uh, we are going one step further. We are using the eBay's uh, product advertising API. In fact, I'm working with Amazon also, they, though they don't allow on iOS. Uh, you utilize whatever you have. You look up the new stuff that, that based on what you have. And uh, it's, it's both an advertising model as well as uh, helping customers find out new stuff based on what you have. So both of those I'm, we are trying to do. Any privacy question? Tell us about privacy. Perfect. Um, I, this, is, this to me is the next frontier, right? If, I, I, know, I know everybody cries well on privacy, but to me, to me, this is the next frontier in terms of showing what you own to a company. And, and, and to me, uh, we already have that cloud database, about 100,000 things of what people own in our database. And, uh, and it's, 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 it's 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 too, it's it's a you know it's a fine line to walk where um, what you use it for matters and and to me what we are going to use it for is only within our data within our walls and with encrypted data so we assure you that uh, and in fact I used to work for a HIPAA compliant uh, healthcare company so I know what 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 we are doing in terms of privacy. Anything else? Hands up high for Danush. 
So you're saying on 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 your side where you're not you're not are you selling the data or the knowledge or percentages like X number of homes in San Francisco have this toy? Absolutely. So yes. you're selling that information uh, to companies or marketers that might want to know that? or No, not necessarily we'll sell it, but like Facebook, we will use open an ad platform on it. So uh, say you are a you are a advertiser and you want to know the people, the ladies who want LV bags, I want to advertise to them. I can open up a, a UI for you where you could tell me what type you're looking for and I can show ad ads to them. So this is this is this is the next level of where Facebook is trying to spend a lot of compute power to figure out what you like. Well, I can go look at your database to tell you what you like. So. Thank you, guys. All right, certainly. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, things have changed, as you can see. Hubert is still in uh, second place, even though they haven't even seen him yet. So we should all just go home. No, no. Um, keep on voting, guys. Has anybody committed their votes yet? Because you save them, and then you can commit, right? You notice that feature? OK, don't commit till we're done. OK, where are Doug and Tony? Coming up. Tony took his watch off. He's getting serious about this. Things are getting real. So congrats to Hubert's passing in second. <laughs> Guess my job is done. <laughs> um, cool. So my name's Tony Antocha. I do uh, BD and marketing at Grio. Doug here is, uh, Doug Kettlecheck is uh, one of the co-founders of Grio. And for those of you who don't know who Grio is, we're actually just local right here in Soma. Uh, we do uh, software development. We're a software development firm. We specialize in web and mobile development, UX, UI design. We have a full team, and uh, we've been around since 2008. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much us. Now we're going to showcase our iOS chops, Hubert's Path. So this game we're pretty excited about. Uh, it should be, it's currently uploaded in the iOS store, right, in the Apple store right now, and it will be accepted within the next week. So that's when you should see it to answer that question that may come up. And uh, yeah, so Hubert's Path is basically a iOS social game. It's based on the old memory game. Do you guys, okay, interaction again. Who remembers the game Concentration or Memory? Any older guys out there? Got a couple. Perfect. For those of you who don't know, it's the old card matching game. You mix up the cards, you face them down, you put them together and take turns matching them. It's kind of fun, right? So we've kind of taken that dynamic. We've matched it with other dynamics such as Candy Crush. You guys have heard of Candy Crush, I'm sure. If you haven't. Probably shouldn't be here. <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, uh, so basically Candy Crush and Jewel Mania, games like that and, and Concentration, we pretty much merged those together and created Hubert's Pass. So it's basically, it, basically this game, here, why don't you just go straight into level one. Well, first off, who's Hubert? So Hubert is this cute little wizard. He's got an owl stuck in his head, and the story behind that really is Woke up one day through one of his adventures and got amnesia. So the user's objective to this game is to help him find his way. So you need to retrace your steps or his steps, basically help him rediscover his life. So that's what this is. We've created 10 different episodes, which we saw on the previous page, and over 100 different levels. So they get progressively harder. Each episode is sort of a different phase in Hubert's life, and each, le each level sort of gets progressively harder than the past. So this first level we're going to show you, how much time we got? All right, three minutes to show you a few episodes, or three levels, rather. So the first one we're going to show you is obviously kind of easy, sort of Hubert's seafaring days. Doug's going to take you through this. So there's some obstacles in between. You're going to have obstacles like bombs. This one's a little bit easier, so there's not too many. As you saw on the first screen that scrolled down before every level, how we're going to monetize this game is every user is going to be able to purchase in-game apps, or boosts. In this case, you would use a boost to stop the bombs. As you get progressive into the game, you're going to have a lot harder levels. There's going to be a full, full plate of tiles. There's going to be hidden bombs, moving cards, and you know, block paths, all sorts of things. And cards are going to be just moving randomly. So the next level we're going to show you, let's go ahead and go out of that, Doug, and go to episode five. 
cute little guy. These skydiving days. Cool, so progressively harder, you guys can see that it gets a little bit more difficult. You're gonna see that there's some countdown cards. If he doesn't match those soon, basically, it's just gonna scramble the whole board. Cards are gonna be moving out randomly. If he used the inbound in, in the boost, he could basically stop those, but we're gonna hope Doug can do it. No pressure, Doug. And if he's really good, actually, you don't have to purchase in-game apps to pass the game. Now, if you match two in a row, it kind of reveals one of the rows or the columns. If you match three, it reveals both a row and a column four, the entire board, and five just kind of gives you a freebie, 15 seconds, no time, uh, and unlimited moves. So kind of have at it. So what do we got, a minute and a half? Why don't we just go ahead and leave there? We'll show you one more, get progressively harder. So the last level we're going to show you, possibly the last, it's going to be one of the last episodes. So this one's similar. You're going to have a similar amount of moves, space episode. So he's got to match all the red block, the red brick uh, pathway, basically to get past this level. Again, no pressure. You'll see a mental block up there. So he's actually got to find two hammers to match to get rid of that block, and then he can keep going. Now they're not all. Some of them are timed. They're not all based on the amount of moves, and they're going to depend on how hard the level is. Go get them, Doug. Go use, use some of this, use some of the boost. Cheer them on. Come on. Give me one of those. There you go. All right. All right, let's get out of there. Go score to the last one. So Doug signed in here Facebook. So if he, if he passed the game, you can see his, uh, you'll see his uh, score, and you can actually compare your scores to all your Facebook buddies. You can send lives to your Facebook friends. You can invite new Facebook friends, and et cetera. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, pretty much this game is built for anyone. You can... You and I can play it to and from home and work, and uh, your grandma can play it. She'd love it. My nephew loves it. Game's kind of for everyone. Here's another level. We'll just sort of let you guys hang on. So. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah. Okay. It's our Qu first ever uh, demo for this game, so welcome Hubert to the public. Yes, you guys saw it first. You go home and dream about that. Okay, hands up high. Come on. Any questions? Anyone want a demo? I have a question. Why? Why? Why not? That was your question too. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Exactly. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. Good. Actually, first of all, UX agency, almost a little cheating, but well done. Uh, what was your inspiration? Uh, actually, I'm going to leave that to Doug because it was more Doug's inspiration than mine. Um, well, it started out, actually, we built another memory-based game um, called Flip Out. It's in the App Store right now. And uh, it got a lot of traction. People really liked that game. So we, you know, it wasn't quite a AAA game like we have here with Flip Out, where you have the, you know, very polished graphics or sound that you can, you know, polished sound as well and all the different levels and these different dynamics that we've introduced. Um, and this game mechanic isn't out there right now. So... You don't have this matching mechanic, you know, the, the triple jewel mechanic of Candy Crush and Jewel Mania and stuff like that, but this matching mechanic is novel, and so we, we want to leverage that and, you know, hopefully monetize on that in the, in the game area. There's not a lot of memory games out there. There's a lot of game poker games out there, but really, there's only a few memory games out there. I know because I, I purchased one before I even started working at Grill. I liked those games, and so that's why I love to market this game. Look for yourself. There's a couple, and they're, they're okay, but this one's fun. This one's got a storyline. You can follow it, and it's good for everyone. It's not just good for your nephew or your kid. Or, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's why we hired Tony, because he played Flip Out. And so we said, okay, Tony, you're hired. <laughs> for anyone that's looking for a job. Hey, so uh, I was wondering about, as a game designer, what I'd call agency. That is the balance between chance and user choice. And it seems like when you start a memory game, you're just stabbing in the dark. So I'm wondering how you balance that. I mean, it seems like that's the experience. Doug had to do it right yeah. there live. Is yeah, it yeah. a pick? Or? Yeah, so we're not going to do a really big push launch right to start. We want to get a few thousand users, um, and then we'll tune the game. So, you know, we have, uh, you know, somebody on our team that's actually the game producer is from Kabam. He's, you know, gone through this exercise many times. He used to work for EA before that, actually. But... 
Um, so we, we know that it's not going to be right just right out of the box. We're going to you know keep tuning it and making it hopefully um, easy, not too easy, but easy enough where people can keep progressing through the levels and you know get to the end and go farther. Yeah. And we'll add more levels. Uh, how many interstitial ad and app things will my child ask me for the password for in this game? Say that again. How many times will my child ask me for the password when she wants to buy something in this game? <laughs> good question, developer Doug. Well, hopefully they'll be good enough where they won't have to buy any boosts. You know? So these, the kids have better memories yeah. than we do. So Your Honor, know. strike is non-responsive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's nothing to buy. Okay, good. Yeah. Downloading now. <laughs> yeah, and if you guys, I was just going to say, if anybody wants to get a kind of preview of the game sneak yeah. peek, come contact us. We'll give you a URL where you can get the game and, and check it out. It's a free game, just based on a premium model. I had a, uh, sorry, had a question. Um, as a uh, outsider from the gaming universe, what are, what are like the five bullets that are that make a successful game? Uh, not exactly, I don't know. Well, I, I, mean, I, I don't know if I can give five bullets, but... Um, well, how would you distill it? I what are sort of the key success factors? Well, fun, obviously, is, is one in challenge. But I think the success, there can be great games that are unknown. They just don't get exposed. They don't get the um, publicity or the virality. So there's certain, you know, in any, you know, there's luck and chance involved with all of this. But um, if you get these... Uh, People that are, you know, kind of network. They, there's a network effect where they have large networks and they're exposed to this game, and they tell thousands or tens of thousands of people will play it because yeah. they play it. Um, you know, some of our strategy for marketing this game is going to be a local strategy. So we're going to try to focus here in San Francisco and get buzz, and hopefully we'll latch on to some of these people that have this uh, network virality. Uh, in that way. So we kind of focus, you know, put all, all our wood behind the arrow right here in San Francisco. I kind of answered the question. I yeah, I, well, I guess but it's more from a game design point of view from, you know, it, there, there's obviously, a, there's luck, but there's also a science to sort of figuring out. And is it, obviously there's, I assume there's a lot of A-B testing and user testing, but has any sort of pattern emerged as to sort of you mean the, from like the visual the, aspect, the, the yeah. balance of, of I, I heard a question from someone much smarter than me. He used a technical term about, I forget what it was. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that you're trading off to get someone engaged but not frustrated, to get them yeah, uh, yeah. addicted enough to pay for something but don't ask them to pay too soon. There's a whole sort of dynamic there. It's yeah, just and, and interesting to learn more about it. Yeah, it's too, you know, it's, it's the, the visual effects are very important and the graphics and the, the kind of the characterization. You can see we have Hubert, he's animated when you, you're rewarded visually when you do something well. We didn't really mention that during the demo, but you could see how he, yay, you know, Hubert is very excited when you win or you match cards. He's, and he's disappointed when you lose. And so getting some of that um, kind of emotional engagement yeah. with, with the, the, the players is very, you know, helpful in... Um, getting retention. And so having, like storyline also helps as well. So there's some there's some stickiness with the storyline as well, which is what we sort of embedded with this game. And Hubert being in a character, a cute little character, you kind of want to help, right? He's sincere, doesn't talk, but you kind of like him. Yeah, the owl on his head. Yeah, who doesn't love that owl? He doesn't talk either. Does that kind of answer your question? All right. Any other questions? One more question back here. Start to finish, start to finish, what, what kind of a time frame are you looking at for people? I'm sorry, for what? I, I can get it. To, be, I, to, to build it. The time frame to build the app was, oh. we started um, late August, early September, yeah. um, and, you know, we're, we're right, you know, submitted now, so, you know, and that doesn't mean we're done, you know, that means that we're done with the, what we want to get to submitted. Then we're, like we said, we're going through a tuning phase, we're going to add some more polish, during that tuning phase, and so, you know, all said and done to where we're, like, putting a big push behind it, it's probably about six months. Yeah. 
be some new versions, you know, all the time, but it's been five or six months. Does anybody else have any questions? I think we're done. All right, take us off. Thank you. <laughs> nice work, Rio. If you guys want to check out the uh, quick demo yourselves, we'll be right over there uh, against the wall next to the bar. Um, you can demo it yourselves. We'll give you a demo code if you want to just download it yourself as well. Otherwise, you can see it in the app store next week. And they've got a bunch of empty cups. Go home with the empty, empty cups. cups. Take our empty cups Take and empty cup home. Come on. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you, Yeah, cheers. Awesome. Okay, so let's, uh, let's roll into our 60-second spots. After the 60 section spots are done, I'm going to close off the voting. So make sure you lock in your votes. There are two buttons. You can save them or you can confirm. Mr. In the middle, I didn't catch your name. Uh, Michael, did you fix things? Everything works? Okay, good. User error, my friend. Hit refresh. Let's hit refresh. So 60 second spots. For all you newbies out there, this is a great opportunity to actually talk to uh, people who can change your life. Orbius, wow. She tweet, did you tweet something out to like, did she, <laughs> 18 million point nine. Facebook is gonna be calling you soon. 60 seconds, this is, I'm waiting for you guys. Anybody? Nobody's got anything to talk about? It's like free exposure. Jeez. Benjamin. Yeah. Uh, speaking of marketing or creating trailers for video games, we're video producers. We make marketing videos. Um, done a lot of work for LinkedIn last year. You can check out our portfolio, bigwonderful.com. That's bigwonderful.com. If you're trying to sell your product or do like a five minute spiel and condense it down to two minutes and add a lot of levels of persuasion and emotion into it, talk to us about making your video. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hi everybody, my name is Josef and I'm a designer. I'm in Y Combinator right now down there in Mountain View, but I won't talk about it. Uh, just wanted to get your feedback on a small side project of mine, a personal project. Uh, what I realized, like, uh, great designers are expensive, like very expensive. So many startups or smaller companies cannot afford them, but I realized they might afford to get a feedback from them, ask them to review their design that they want to release, for example. And so I launched a small website. You can find it on draftfeedback.com. And you can choose a designer there, send him a link to your design, and ask him to give you, give you feedback for a fraction of, of his normal daily price. And that's basically it. And I would love to hear your feedback if it if it makes sense, if you would use that, if the pricing is good, and so on, so on. Thanks very much. Thank you. You can find Yosef sitting in the front row right here. OK, so uh, anybody else have uh, something going on? Anybody looking for a job? Who's looking for funding? Come on, talk about it. Who's looking, who's, who's looking for love? John in the back, you're all set in that department. Um, Cindy, come on up. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Cindy Fung and I'm a user experience consultant over at a startup agency called Redshift in Soma. So if uh, anybody needs any user experience, UI help, design help, business strategy, uh, come talk to me afterwards and uh, we'd love to talk and see if we can work together. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. OK, let's say going once. Don't be shy. Going twice. Don't be shy. OK, so we are going to officially uh, stop. Uh, Greg, I think I have to do that from another window. So did you guys all confirm your votes? Make sure you do that now, OK? Let's lock these in. And therefore, we can, uh, we can say, I think it's uh, safe to say that Orbius will be at 6 about to break at Macworld. So 
Big round of applause. And here's here here's here's a here's a here's a caveat. So we've been accepting applications uh, for a couple of weeks now, and uh, we'll be accepting applications until March third, and then we're going to decide by March tenth who's going to be uh, of the six. Um, so there's still opportunity out there. If you go to sfnewtech.com, you're going to see on the top it says apply to six about to break. Hit that link. It's a quick application process. Um, and I just want to say that Orbius took home the, the prize tonight, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the others have been 100% excluded from winning. They'll still be in the running, but those guys will definitely move forward. So there's still potential uh, for these other guys based on our jury. We're working uh, with Cult of Mac uh, to help choose this. Um, we have, media, as Paul had said, we have media partners with uh, Fast Company and VentureBeat. Um, and uh, we have sponsors, uh, Rackspace and uh, Telerik, uh, helping us out. And I'm pitching a bunch of others that I'm hoping will come in the door. So if you know anybody that wants to get involved at Macworld in March, let me know. And I'm sure we can find a home for you there and make, uh, make things cool and good. Um, you want to hit refresh one more time, Greg? Wow. I'm kind of blown away by this, actually. So Orbius, uh, with 23 million bucks um, off of more or less a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, right? But I guess it knocked it out of the park, so that's cool. OK, so I'm going to start singing and dancing, and you guys can all watch, or we can just all go home. I think we're done. Thanks for coming down, you guys. Oh, wait, wait, one more thing, one more thing. Our next event, March 13th, we are going to be welcome, welcoming to this stage amazing innovation from the Netherlands. So Dutch Tech Night here at SF New Tech. Thanks to our friends at the, uh, the Consulate General of the Netherlands. Um, we're super excited about that. And then, of course, at uh, Macworld on March 27th. So stay tuned to our emails. Don't filter. Don't, don't send us to spam. Read them. And there's good stuff inside. Thanks for coming down, everybody. You all rock. Chris, cue the music. Okay, the bar in the back is going to open back up. We'll see you there, yeah? <laughs>